Welcome to the Calgary Sessions. This is episode number 83. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. Today's guest, I'm going to give you, you, you don't know this, but I'm going to tell it to you now that you're sitting here. <laughs> you're the first person that I actually just sent like a cold email out to, to get on the show. Really? Yep. So um, usually what's been happening is the guests on the show are like in my world somehow. You know, yeah. they're in my phone, they're just associated in a network I have. And then what, what also is happening, the guests are um, telling the friends like, oh, you need, to, you need to meet this person. Yeah. So you... I was just thinking about I want to, I just want to go like outside of my network and just try and find somebody cool in Calgary. So so the the and I don't I don't research anybody like I don't, yep. I don't do any research, but whatever I googled, your name came up, and then I started like looking into what you're up to. I was like, well, she fits. Yeah. So I literally went to your website, sent an email to what's his name? Pete. Pete. Peter. Yeah. I was just like, hey, Peter, <laughs> you don't know me. I have this little podcast. Here's who I've had on. I don't know if Holly would be interested. And here we go. So this yeah. is how this one happened. So uh, thanks for being on. So anyways, uh, go ahead, introduce yourself, name and who you are. Well, I'm honored first that I was your first cold email. Mm. <laughs> uh, my name is Holly Singer and I am a candle maker and business owner of Milk Jar Candle Company here in Calgary, Alberta that I started six and a half years ago in my kitchen, and we have now grown to a team of 19 staff members, and we have a warehouse in the central northeast of Calgary. Um, We do so much more than just uh, sell candles. We teach candle making classes. You can fundraise with Milk Jar. We're also a refillery, Um, so you can bring any vessel. You can bring even different candles, like old candle vessels that we didn't even make, and we'll fill them up. Um, and you just pay by the ounce, and it's kind of a more sustainable way to get your candles and not throw your jars away. Um, and the biggest thing about Milk Jar, though, I would say is uh, it's really how we connect with the community and how we are really trying to create more inclusive um, spaces and really kind of promote what inclusion means to be in a workplace. And we are an inclusive company, so a quarter of our staff at Milk Jar have a disability that help make the product. Um, and from its inception, since I started Milk Jar, we also have donated a dollar from the sale of every candle and diffuser uh, to nonprofits um, that support children with disabilities and also to organizations that also create inviting and inclusive public spaces, such as Skipping Stone and Inclusion Alberta. And in six years, we've donated over $236,000, which is incredible. Crazy. <laughs> so you can, you can, for people that are listening right now or watching the they have a, an understanding of why you caught my attention. Yes. You, <laughs> you, you've been doing something very different for mm-hmm. a relatively short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And it seems like you have like your purpose driven. Yes. And definitely. that is kind of like this thought process that's been in my mind lately. So when I was doing my research or trying to find somebody, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this all fits. So oh. that's how it happened. Um, you've never seen these, which is awesome. Because <laughs> you, you did no research, I did no research. Yeah, that's the way I like it. <laughs> so, so what I, what I like to do is I like the guests to go back as far as they want to go. Okay, how they grew up, where they grew up, what inspired them, what was um, just what you were up to, how your parents or family did or didn't inspire you, and then we'll kind of weave a path to where you are today, and then Sweet. hopefully just kind of connect some dots along the way to you know so people understand what makes you tick and why you're able to do what you do. So totally take it back. Okay. Uh, So I was born in Victoria, BC, so I am not a Calgarian, um, but I moved here when I was 21. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went to UVic right out of high school, and I did two years at UVic and then really wanted to be in the kinesiology program. Uh, I love sports. When I was younger, I played softball for seven or eight years, Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I just loved Loved that. I loved, and you know, kinesiology. I love science. I was pretty good in school. Yep. Like, were you playing all sports when you were a youngster? Like, when you are you know, 5 to 12, did you play everything? Or what were you doing? <sighs> was I? I mean, I played tennis, and I swam. I didn't really, I didn't like soccer. I didn't like running. Mm. <laughs> That's probably why I chose softball. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you short stand sprints. around. <laughs> you stand around a lot, and you yeah. just do short sprints. Um... I did play, I played a decent amount of sports. I like, yeah, I had a really nice upbringing. I um, played piano. It wasn't very, well, I was okay at it, but I didn't practice a lot at it. I don't mm-hmm. think that was really my uh, my forte. Um, but uh, yeah, sports kind of interests me. I love science too. When I was growing up in high school, I was good in biology and like chemistry. So yeah. 
when I was in university, I was like, oh, kinesiology is kind of like science, hum human movement, and it's more at the macro level, not the micro level. Yeah. I like learning about cells and stuff. I remember I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this part about biology, but like learning about how muscles move mm -hmm. and how the human body works and um, all sorts of things like that. I kind of interest me more. I mean, really, you're trying to pick a degree at 20 years old. So <laughs> you're trying to be like, oh. Mm -hmm. But so your parents are asking you what interests you. Yeah. What did um? Would your parents did they did they um, introduce you to a bunch of things, whether it's like music or sports, or was it kind of driven just based on your interests? And they would kind of they would kind of help you get there. I don't even know if I had a lot of interests. Like I think my parents. I was actually a really really shy kid growing mm. up, very very shy, which is. Pretty shocking for people to hear now because I can. Because you seem very comfortable. <laughs> I can talk people's ear off. <laughs> I remember being a kid and I was so shy that, and I didn't, I didn't have a ton of friends growing up when I was younger. I had, I had a couple really close friends, but my sister, who's just a year older than me, had a ton of friends, and my mom would always be like, "Leslie, let your sister play with you and your friends." And my sister would be like, "Oh," like be so frustrated that she'd always have to bring me around. Um, like to the point where my mom signed me up for having a pen, having a pen pal no in London. Yeah, pen pals used to be a thing because there's no internet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 34, so yeah, the internet what came out when I was like maybe 10. Yep. So yeah, when I was like maybe 10, I don't know how but long ago the, that was. The internet came out like oh, 95, 96. 90, right, Windows, Windows 95. Yeah, right around there. Yeah, and then, but I don't think. I mean, it was slow. There mm -hmm. wasn't a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't what it is now. No, no. <laughs> so um, there was no social media, really. Yeah. I think net, net. What was it called? Netscape. Netscape, and or or that one that with those profiles you could make Nexopia. <laughs> Do you remember next no. <laughs> Oh, maybe that was. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 46. Oh, okay, so it was after. It yeah, was yeah. After your <laughs> it was like uh, MySpace. It was like the after MySpace. I remember high school kids all had Nexopia. Weird. Um, yeah, it was a weird thing. I missed that one. Yeah, um, you didn't miss much. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What was that? Um, the shyness, like like to a point yeah. where, and I was shy too. That's yeah. um, that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, and and for me it was. Just obviously, um, talking in front of people drove me crazy. Yeah. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just small groups. I was okay, but the minute there was more people, I was. It was yeah. tricky. I don't. I I remember even thinking at a young age. I knew I was shy and I didn't want to be. Mm. Like I remember thinking that I was like, oh, I wish I. I would like look at other kids just being so outgoing mm. and loud, and um, I could I could definitely be more out sort of outgoing with some close people yeah if I was had my best friend just over um but uh yeah I think it I don't know our my family is pretty big yeah um I'm the youngest of six but a blended family wow yeah so both my parents were previously married had yeah. two kids um they separated and then got together and had my sister and I mm. um but we lived with my mom's kids and then my dad's um kids would come over on weekends wow. from Vancouver so there's a lot going on oh my gosh I was a baby um, which is great. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, there was a lot going on. Uh, there's a little bit of chaos in my family, I think growing up too. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, yeah, a lot going on. So I think I was just this like little wallflower yep. a little bit, just like, don't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Just, just be, be quiet and sweet kind of thing. So, but I knew I didn't want to be shy. I remember thinking that as a kid and trying to do things as I grew up to kind of push me out of my comfort zone. Mm. Um, like I remember once being a camp counselor mm. for 12, when I was 16 for 12 year old, like a girl's camp. Yeah. Um, and that was a, that was a, like a calculated decision that, yeah. you, that you knew you wanted to kind of practice or just get better at something or. Yeah. And yeah, I remember, I think I remember in grade six being like deathly afraid of this speech I had to, we had to do grade six speeches in front of your class. Mm. Oh my gosh. I did mine on glow sticks. Like it could be on anything. I don't know. In our school, it could be on anything. I, did, I wrote my speech on glow sticks, <laughs> and and how they work. <laughs> and uh, I remember being oh gosh, like, like I still remember the anxiety I had. Like it was, it was yeah, just so scary. And mm -hmm. um, but that was grade six. Like you're pretty young in grade six, yeah. maybe like twelve. But it's interesting how there's people at that same age that are just yeah. They look like they're comfortable. I'm sure they're not like yeah. super comfortable, but they can play it off like they're very, yeah. they're okay with the situation. 
Yeah. And like, I still get nervous talking from people, but I've done like some big talks now. Like I, I actually just spoke, um, last month at the report to the community, the Calgary economic development. Mm -hmm. I thought there was going to be like 500 people there. There was like 2000 people there. I didn't do my research again, as I don't do. <laughs> You're consistent. Yeah, I am. I actually, this is so bad. I actually, I, uh, yeah, I just kind of focus, I think, on like, oh, okay, this, these are the questions I got to answer. I'm talking to Calgarians, okay, mm-hmm. or business owners or whoever I'm talking to, what for whatever talk, and I kind of just don't really look too into it. Yeah. Um, don't want to, like, freak myself out, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, so that, uh, that camp counselor thing. Yeah. Was there any, um, besides, like, improving yourself, the idea of, like working with youngsters that might be feeling something similar. Yeah. Did that yeah. enter into your thought process? I think, yeah. Cause I, I think I was like, I wasn't bullied or anything growing up, but I was very shy and I feel like I didn't have a lot of friends mm-hmm. growing up. Um, it wasn't until maybe grade 10 that I like came out of my shell. I remember I became friends with this girl cause we both worked at McDonald's. Uh, Megan, love you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I became really close to this girl in my grade who was like miss outgoing, mm-hmm. like super, so many friends and just, and so funny, like actually, and so cool. Mm-hmm. So I was like stoked when we both were working at McDonald's and we became buds. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes. That was, that was, that, I was like, I'm, just, like, I can be myself and I, I'm gonna, and yeah, and I can like be who I want to be. And yeah, and she kind of like, I don't know, just being with her, like she just, yeah, showed how effortless it could be and, it wasn't, and she was so nice, so sweet. Like she was, she wasn't, yeah, she was awesome. She pulled me out of my shell. Mm. Yeah. Went to parties with her. My cool status one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was, and I, yeah, I, I definitely put myself out there a little bit more, but yeah, I was super shy kid. Um, and then, uh, yeah, being a camp counselor though, that was probably around the same time as that grade 10. I think I was in grade 10. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And I knew probably being a camp counselor for, 12 year olds I'm like oh they're just they're way younger than me I don't need to have nothing to be scared of (laughs) (laughs) I got this (laughs) you know kids just want to fit in right so I think maybe just being scared to like say something weird yeah yeah, so just don't say anything at all kind of thing which is Mm -hmm. I don't know I hope you know that growing up in the 90s too those are actually that was the 2000s because I was born in 89 so it's through the 90s and the 2000s kind of that era of like I don't know there's one type of way to be from yep. the magazines and you know mm. what you see um the Paris Hilton's uh, mm. that kind of thing like that was what our mm. that's you know, what you're seeing that's what we were all seeing yeah mm. like there's that's cool that's popular I think it's uh, my friend actually asked me this the other day they were like do you think with social media now for kids that you know they're seeing so many different types of people like it's cool to be anything Mm -hmm. you know it's not cool to just be Britney Spears you know it's cool to be Billie Eilish and it's cool to be you know share there's people that share that they you know they have a platform and they have a disability Mm -hmm. and they're advocates for it Mm -hmm. and they're confident seeing that and he was he was saying like do you think it's like confusing or something and I was like I think that was what he was asking and I was like and like not good and you know and I was like I think it's probably better like I don't know about social media for kids yeah, yeah. I don't know how yeah, that, yeah, that's, that that's whole different. topic yeah, is yeah. I was like I think it's great to see um uh it's so easy to see people and like even like celebrities but TikTok stars like yeah. people that didn't aren't a conventional celebrity mm-hmm. you know gain popularity and they gained it for them being them yeah. and being unique and being uh uh you know wearing what they're wearing or loving who they're loving mm-hmm. and um I was like I think that's that's really cool. It's being able to like show people that they can, they don't have, it's not, there's not one way to be where you can feel accepted. Yeah, That's it. It's like kind of like when you're growing up back then in the nineties and two thousands, there's one way that Mm -hmm. you were always attaining to be Mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't feel right, it was. Yeah. Or you, and, and if you were different from that, you were like teased. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, you just want to like, so just blending in Yeah, people. I find, I hope I don't go to high schools now, but (laughs) I'm just walking to high schools and <laughs> check out the kids. <laughs> um, but uh, I would hope that people feel very confident and just being who they are mm-hmm. and it's accepted. They yeah. feel included. Yeah. You're not being excluded for being a bit different, different. or a little or what people would think is, yeah, odd. Yeah. Yep. I mean, seeing the kids walk down 17th Ave from the Western High School, they all look pretty funky. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah. a lot of funkiness. Yeah. I'm like, nice. 
They're yeah. way funkier than I was. <laughs> and I think what's interesting, it's either social maybe gives them the, the opportunity to explore those things and feel like they can be themselves, but I'm sure there's pressure that you and I yeah. don't understand too. Oh. That's who knows what that looks like. But yeah. there's, yeah. there's way more um, examples of what's possible. Yeah. Versus back in the day, you were just kind totally. of, there's like two paths. You were, you were like yeah. Brittany or... We were, we were raised by American Pie and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the OC, or I was, <laughs> Laguna <laughs> Beach. So that's the thing is like, that's what we were raised on and stuff. So, but yeah. I think it's really cool that, you know, yeah, there's even shows, TV shows now mm -hmm. are a lot more, you know, yeah. diverse. So For it's sure. cool. Um, so what else is happening in high school? High, high school. Um, in high school, probably this probably really, I feel like impacted, kind of was a starting impact of me wanting to work with kids. Um, it was when I was in ninth grade, um, I have scoliosis. So my spine is, uh, quite curved. Yep. Um, I have an S curve. So there's different types of scoliosis curves that you can have. And because mine was an S curve, um, it's a genetic condition. And um, most people have like scoliosis have, it maybe be pretty mild, like a 10 degree curve or yep. a five degree curve. Um, but mine was 45 degrees and I didn't know. And oftentimes, you know, because someone as they're developing, they're like hips will, hips yeah. will be out of line in their shoulders mm -hmm. or they'll kind of start getting a, a little bit of a hump. Yep. Um, but scoliosis, it was in, uh, I think it was, I was in grade nine at the time and it was the summertime and my mom's a, a physician and I was outside tanning i remember in grade nine in my backyard <laughs> getting ready for oh no i was i was not in grade nine yet i was leaving middle school in the summertime going about to go to high Where? school grade nine so i needed my tan mm -hmm. i was like oh my gosh i'm going to high school and it was grade nine to grade 12. yeah i was just, they called us niners <laughs> I was going to be a niner. I got to be a tan niner. I got to look like Bernie Spears. <laughs> um, and I remember, I, so I was outside, I was in, in a bathing suit, and then I came into the kitchen and getting a snack, something, and I dropped the snack on the floor. I think it was grapes. I, probably, I think I probably remember it because this is a pivotal memory. And I bent over to pick it up. Um, and my mom was in the kitchen and she noticed that I had a hump on my back when I bent over. And my mom's like, oh my gosh, like you have scoliosis. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay. I was like, I don't feel it. Like it doesn't hurt or anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the next, my mom seemed kind of concerned. She's like, this is pretty like curved. Um, and then the next, like, I think a week later, she had set up a appointment for me at the children's hospital in Victoria, uh, to go get it x-rayed and looked at. And it came back, yeah, it was a 45 degree curve, which is pretty, pretty intense. At 50 degrees, they usually do surgery. So oh. they would put a metal, metal rod in your back. Mm. And I don't think they do rods anymore. I think now they, if they do have to do surgery, they clamp each vertebrae. Okay. So I think people now that get it can bend. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on that. Yeah. Um, but back, um, back then it was a, a metal rod that you got, like right in yeah. your back. So you, I wouldn't have been able to have bent, mm. like ever. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason is so it doesn't get worse. And it's when, uh, uh, people are going through puberty, your bones don't harden until two years after, uh, you start puberty as a woman. Mm -hmm. So that means that you have to wear a back brace, um, until your bones are hardened, oh. uh, so that it doesn't continually to progressively get worse. And yep. then it's like, uh, then it causes you more problems yep. in the long run. Uh, so because mine was 45 degrees, I didn't have to have surgery, but I had to have a back brace mm -hmm. for two years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, and I remember being, so then I think then a week after that I had a back brace and I was just like, Oh my gosh, what, what the heck happened in the last two weeks? Like, yeah. so, which was hard. Like it went under my clothes, but it, uh, it caused probably like kind of some issues. I had to wear it 23 hours a day. Wow. I had to sleep in it. It was really tight. It was quite uncomfortable. And, um, yeah, I remember being just, like, really bummed. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to high school. It's a lot to handle at a young age. Yeah. It, yeah, it was – and, yeah, when you – yeah, you're about to go into high school and then you have to wear baggy sweatshirts all the time. Well, yeah. I didn't have to, but I yeah. chose to. Yeah. Um, I remember being like – I'm I like, crying to my mom. I was like, 
can't wear halter top. <laughs> <laughs> halter top. I remember being so like, at the school dance. <laughs> yeah, all the, you had at all, the Commonwealth yeah. dance, again, we're halter top. <laughs> I'm never going to go to boyfriend. <laughs> I remember saying that. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to high school. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. So that was, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot for a teenager, like a preteen, whatever, 14 or yeah. whatever age I was. Yeah, 14. I wore it from the time I was 14 to 16, so Ooh. grade 9 to grade 11. And I think those were really huge years for me, really. I, th I And, like, looking back, I actually am, like, appreciative that that happened in a way. Yeah. Which sounds weird because I remember being, like, really, like, uh, like why me? And, like, really mm -hmm. bummed about it. Um, I was really upset I thought I couldn't play softball for those years because I had to wear Because I couldn't really – it would be hard to, yeah. you know, bend to like get the ball yeah. and field it. So, um, but after, I think that was the summer when I was playing next season, like nine or 10 months later, I was able to take it off for like four hours a day. Wow. So that was good. So I could play, play ball and not have to wear it. Mm -hmm. um, I had to change in a different change room in high school, which was kind of awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I never got made fun of to my face, yeah. which was good. Yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm really happy. Like I didn't really get bullied to my face at all. I think I was very lucky. I think I had some, I had some good friends around that time. And then, um, yeah, my personality shone through after that. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you, when you have to, when you stop wearing it at 16, do you, do you feel like you're, I probably was like, like yeah, butterf more butter of, butterfly, yeah, like totally. ready to go. Like, yeah. Like, Actually, though, you're in a case that you're coming out like caterpillar. Mm. Yeah, I probably was like, and I think it taught me a lot back then at a very young age how important it is for we, who you are on the inside mm. is who you need to show. It doesn't matter what tan you have and what <laughs> halter top you wear. Because um, I really was like, I want, like, you know, I can't dress like the other kid or the other, most of the other girls, how they're dressing is how I'm not going to dress. Mm. And, you know, you don't really care about a whole lot of things at that age. But maybe, like your friends, like doing fun stuff, and yeah. maybe get it. For me, it was getting a boyfriend. <laughs> 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 For me, it was getting a boyfriend. Oh, we're doing it anyway. So, I don't know. I was so dramatic back then, and uh, it taught me that things pass too. And um, it's just what had to happen. And sometimes there's things that are just out of your control. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm really happy. I don't think I got judged for it. I didn't think I. It's not like people thought I was any less that I had to wear this thing or that mm -hmm. I wasn't cool anymore wearing baggy sweatshirts all the time. And yeah, it's, uh, and then, yeah, when I came out of it, it was, yeah, it was, I definitely think I felt, I was very happy that, you know, I didn't have to wear it anymore mm -hmm. and I was able to, you know, get, you know, it will bend over. <laughs> it was nice, it was nice <laughs> to bend over again. I had to, every time I dropped something, I had to like, go down with like my knees. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. It, Cause it was uncomfortable for sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of people deal with a lot of uncomfortable things all the time. Even mm -hmm. I bet I don't, I never thought that it had impacted why I work with people with disabilities mm -hmm. and why I maybe, you know, um, have that interest in, you know, helping lift others up and yeah. just, and just help with opportunities, like not doing things for people, but really making them feel included. Mm -hmm. Um, and safe and welcome and, you know, help creating, you know, yeah, creating situations where they, where they have an opportunity to, you know, yeah, just, just feel empowered, mm -hmm. you know, I think, um, yeah, cause I, th I feel very like fortunate that, you know, that that was only two years of my life mm -hmm. and, and that I didn't have surgery. Oh my gosh, like yeah. that would have been, I remember thinking though at the beginning, I'd be like, I wish I just got surgery because I didn't have to wear this stupid thing. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking that as a kid, like when you're just like, I just don't want to be made fun of and I don't want to mm -hmm. be, include. I don't want to be different. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be different. Mm -hmm. That was basically it. Probably why I was shy and probably why I like did, definitely didn't want it. I was like, I want to fit in. I want to look like everyone else. I don't want to be different. And then, you know, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. I could still play ball and I could still have friends and my friends were awesome. Um, it wasn't a big deal. Um, I got through it, you know, it was two years of wearing it for a long time, sleeping in it. Mm -hmm. I remember my armpit was really itchy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my armpit, I had a really itchy armpit all the time. I sweated in it a lot. <laughs> I oh can't my imagine. god. 
I remember my family, we used to have a timeshare in Las Vegas. So I went, I went to Vegas a lot as a kid. It was so much fun. I had such a fun time there as a kid. <laughs> um, like going to like Excalibur and like Cirque du Soleil shows. And uh, I remember I had to wear it once and we went to Vegas in like summer and I had that back price, which was like hard. But the air conditioning inside is pretty good there. Yeah. Yeah. And all the Manageable. casinos and hotels. So yeah. Yeah. No, I think that really impacted me. Um, More so than you think, yeah. you know, like. Uh, I think it. I think it. Uh, it brought something to my attention yeah. that when later in life, when in my kines degree, I actually I had an opportunity to swim with a boy with cerebral palsy, mm. um, in a practicum, and uh, and do his pool therapy. So assist him in stretching in a warm pool, um, and and with his mother too. And I ended up doing that for seven years instead of just the four month practicum because I oh. just enjoyed it so much. Yeah. I think probably from my earlier, those yeah. earlier happenings of what I kind of experienced and that it was, you know, things, it, yeah, it's, it's just, it was a uncomfortable thing. It was, you know, a brace that I had to wear. It kind of made some things a little bit more challenging, but not really. Yeah. So it's like just, you know, to be able to offer offer some assistance or accommodations for someone, um, you know, is just some some way that I feel like I can, you know, help someone feel feel like they don't feel different. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um so going into kinesiology mm -hmm. out of your, out of high school. Yeah. Was it was there any like any tie to the way the body moves and how it works based on what you're experiencing? Or was it no. like, or, or was it, or was it more just, um, you were interested in athletics Actually, and being no. healthy and moving? I think I was also interested. So from, yeah, kind of from that experience and maybe being a camp counselor, working with kids, I loved working with kids. Um, I'm kind of a kid myself sometimes. <laughs> As you can see from my branding, I love like inanimate objects with faces. <laughs> so cute. Um, I think, yeah, when I when I entered when I did apply for Kines after I did bio for two years at UVic and then was applying for the Kines program, I think I like sports, like kids, and I thought I think occupational therapy was on my mind, um, being an occupational therapist. Yeah. So um, and primarily, hopefully, working with children um, with disabilities. And yeah, and then really it got solidified when I got into the program in, in Calgary, moved here, and I. Uh, yeah, and then I, I I took a physical at, or sorry adapted activity adapted physical activity course at the UFC in my kines degree, mm. and out of all the classes I took like anatomy, physiology, like all those classes, uh, this adapted physical activity class was my favorite. Mm. Um, I learned so much about you know accommodations and you know um, how people move and how people with different abilities move, and. Uh, yeah, I really liked it. And that was where I got offered to do a practicum. So I said, yes. And then after that practicum was over, I, yeah, I just, I enjoyed it so much. I kept swimming with Fraser and his mom, Rhonda. Um, they're very special to me. That's I still a long see time. them today. Yeah. Seven years from the time he was 13 to 20. Wild. Yeah. And um, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to be an OT. <laughs> so then I was like, this is my calling. And then after, uh, after Kines, I graduated in 2012. Yeah. Applied for a master's at UVA and didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> so everything, everything stopped. I went to Thursday too many Thursdays. <laughs> Thursday was good. <laughs> yeah, Thursday was so fun. Oh that my shitty God. carpet on the floor. I know. They don't. I don't think they do that anymore. Oh, that's, that's like I'm old. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have that anymore. But mm. yeah, yeah. I think I went out a little bit too much in university. But I had fun. Um, um, I was still a B student though. It's okay. You had figured out. How did um, coming to Calgary? Was it just? <gasps> Was it um, when you applied and got in, like you knew that you wanted to, like this was going to be a place for you? Yeah. You know what's funny? I, in my, yeah, in my um, first degree, yeah, the, sorry, at UVic, um, I applied for the Kines degree there program. And for some reason it's a, yeah, it's, I didn't think I was going to get in because it was a very competitive program and I felt like Kines was my calling. Um so I applied at SFU and UFC as well, mm. just to be sure. Yep. Um, and I ended up getting in all three. Mm. But so I ended up getting in at UVic. Um, and I ended up still accepting Calgary. Calgary, I had been here once when I was 18. It was like a, like a high school graduation 
trip that probably many kids in BC do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a year different. <laughs> yeah, a year difference. <laughs> uh, I had so much fun. I really thought Calgary was pretty cool. Um, my eldest sister, or not eldest, my one of my one of my older sisters just had moved here at the time too, so mm. she was out here. Um, and yeah, and I think I wanted an excuse to move out of my parents' home because if I went to UVic, I would have yep. probably stayed at home, which is good to save some money. But I think I wanted to get. I was ready to say bye. <laughs> 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 call you when I call you. <laughs> yeah, and I think too, you know, with being a bit shy, I don't think I was very sheltered or anything, but. Being shy and just not coming out of my shell, I think I was very interested in moving to a place where no one knew me. Mm -hmm. And I could, because I'd already started coming out of my shell more in grade 11, grade 12, and even in, you know, in my early 20s. Um, I would say I was, I was still a little bit of a square. <laughs> <laughs> and, and but But I was interested in, like, discovering more and, like, figuring you know, meeting new people and, you know, I, what better way than to force it yeah. by moving to a new city? Mm -hmm. Like if you don't, if you don't put yourself out there, you won't make, you won't have a good time because you yeah. won't be able to make any friends and who wants to be lonely? So yeah. it, I think that was really, really, really special. I think I was like, I want to, I was like, this will really, really kickstart me being outgoing. <laughs> yeah. You knew it was going to be a challenge yeah. that, that you were going to, or the path you were going to go down was going to yep. push you. Yeah, and it did work. I remember in the first, uh, at UFC, my first week there, I was like, okay, I need a friend. <laughs> I need a friend here. Um, I I uh, saw, saw this girl. I'm still friends with her too to this day, Nat. Um, I saw this girl, and she looked really cool. She was wearing these cool, like, shoes. They were like, I don't know. They were these, like, lace-up dance looking shoes but they were they were, kind of look like converse but they were bigger I, I can't remember they were really cool and so I was like and she was like oh she looks like and she kind of was always by herself a little bit like mm -hmm. and but hanging around the kines area mm -hmm. and I noticed her in my first couple classes and then I saw her in lunchtime through in the atrium and I was like hey those are nice shoes she's like oh th thanks she's like I like your dress I was wearing a dress that day I was like thanks and he just like walked away it's like, cool, be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Keep together. <laughs> and then in our next class, she was in my next classroom too. So she was in like three or four of my classes. Mm. Um, I got there early and I sat down and then she ended up sitting like right by me, but not right beside mm -hmm. me. She, she made sure to leave one seat in mm -hmm. the classroom open. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so she, I was like, okay, I think she's, I think, I think she's feeling me as a friend. Um, so I added Mike and Ike, so I offered her Mike and Ike's. I was like, I got them free. I was like, hey, would you like some Mike and Ike's? Isn't that a, like, an SNL skit or something? I don't know. It could <laughs> or, be. Or a Mad I was like, you like Mike and Ike's? Um, uh, but I had Mike and Ike's, and I was like, and it was, and she's like, yeah, sure. She told me years later that she hates Mike and Ike's. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so she was my first friend. We're still really best friends really good friends today. She lives in Texas now though. Mm. Um, but uh, I'll see her. She's actually coming back to Calgary in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to go see her. But yeah, now we've been friends for like 12 years. Cool. Yeah. So that anyway, university was your... My coming out party. Yeah. My you know, university was here for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, except for me getting into OT. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens then? So when you, you had a plan, you apply, don't get in. Mm, then sort, sort of plan. I think I wasn't that bummed. I kind of decided I want to be I, an o, being an OT would be a good path mm -hmm. for like my interests and you know how I could feel purposeful mm -hmm. um, and hopefully make a good income. Yeah. Um, but uh, did you know? Sorry. Yeah. Did you know that working with kids was going to give you that that fire? Yeah. I working yeah working with children with disabilities I think was the biggest thing. Like I think children that you know the. I think because I felt different growing up, mm -hmm. even though, you know, the, like, yeah, I, I felt different and I didn't like that I was shy and I didn't like that I had a lot of friends. I remember, like, I really wanted friends. Like, I had three pen pals, though, <laughs> and I had two. I, I did have two really close friends when I was, like, in my elementary school days, but one of them moved away. So I really, I honestly felt like I had one friend, like, mm -hmm. in my school growing up, like, mm -hmm. in my elementary school. Um, and not that anyone was mean to me. No one was mean to me. Mm -hmm. I just like was painfully quiet and shy and I didn't know why. And, you know, my, my family life was like chaotic, like I said. So maybe just like in that chaos, just speaking up was yep. just hard for me and being the youngest. 
Um, but I knew, yeah, I knew I, I really, really wanted friends. And so um, I felt a little different then. And then when I kind of was like, okay, high school's my time, like, and all this. And then, you know, I felt like, oh, gosh, this is going to set me back. This is like, I like, I just want to hide and no one to see me. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to be a flat, like a, or a wallflower. Like I didn't want, I don't want people to n notice me. I don't want them to talk about my back brace. Like this is embarrassing. And yeah. So I think just with people that, you know, have typically not been included, yeah. um, they're usually excluded, um, has always, I think, just yeah, had a soft spot for me because yeah. I, I felt some, I think everyone feels this way, though, growing up. Everyone just wants to fit in and stuff, so. Yeah, just different, um, probably different levels of intensity. Yeah. You know, I think that even the, I think even the most confident people are probably yeah. not that confident, but they can either put on a face and. Mm -hmm. move through move through space and it kind of looks that way but yeah other people they can no. hide it yeah yeah I think we all we all feel that way a little bit but I do think that that was really impactful for where my where, you my, where my life was gonna go mm -hmm. but OT was like a thought yep. I was like oh yeah I was like this makes sense and then didn't get in and I was like I was kind of bummed but I was like Oh, like school was really hard. <laughs> I had undiagnosed ADHD, so <laughs> it was real hard <laughs> uh, writing papers. So I kind of was just like, oh, like I'll, I'll figure it out, you know? Yep. You know what? I just did four years of, or five years, because I, I took five years to do my first degree because I went traveling in the mix there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, right after high school, or sorry, right after that first degree, I decided to, I'm going to serve. <laughs> and I worked at National 17th, right mm. when it, that's when it first opened. Crazy. I was like, hey, I'm done school. I just want to make money. Yeah. And I want it to be easy. And just take a break. Like take you were okay with just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was okay with taking a break. Yeah, just for even like the, uh, that first year um, while I figured it out. And I think I, I did apply in that first year, but then didn't get in. And, yeah. and I wasn't too worried about it. Like, I think I knew I had to be a straight A student to get in. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wasn't. So I wasn't shocked that I didn't get in. Mm -hmm. um, I looked into upgrade, like, how could I go back and upgrade to get that 4.0 GPA or that A minus? And I remember I was like, the, um, uh, but the the counselor, the school counselor, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, guidance counselor, <laughs> guidance counselor. <laughs> maybe. I don't yeah, know. yeah. They told me that uh, I would have to take ten classes and get straight A's in all of them, and I was like, well, I couldn't even do that in my first degree. So I was like, I'm not going to spend right. more money and try to get straight A's. Um, when I was a B student, like I was like, it was I did decent. Yep. I was like, I also had a good time, <laughs> <laughs> and I had ADHD, <laughs> and I didn't have Adderall to help me. <laughs> now I realize I could have probably gotten those straight A's. Um, so yeah, then I I worked, I served for a bit, which I was so grateful for, like serving, which is interesting, right, with your mm -hmm. personality and getting things. Yep. Yeah, like force yourself in a situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and on it, and be, being at a place at that age, like twenty four, but being a very hot new place. Yep. Um, yeah, and having huge sections. Mm. Oh my gosh, mm. the the table sections they'd give you too, and you just got to be like quick, Go and on. you have to be like outgoing, and yeah, your tips and stuff. Like yep. you got to be friendly, and you know, have knowledge too, yep. and be able to speak to people. Yeah, there's so, like how many beers are like they came out with a hundred. So there something? was like I think there was like eighty beers eight. or something on tap. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I took jobs even, yeah, serving like that yeah, brought me out of my shell. And yeah, by the time, but by the time I moved to Calgary, like that was like, I was like, okay, this is my time. Click. It's like, yeah, no one, no one had any preconceived notions of yep. who I was mm -hmm. if I, and not, and yeah, maybe my high school friends that I would have just kept hanging out with in Victoria, but you know, I could be this like whole new person and, um, yeah, I could be whoever I wanted to be mm -hmm. and I could be who I want, who I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, I kind of really came into my own. And then um, after when OT didn't work out, I served for a bit and then I got a couple jobs uh, working for, one was working for Cause and Effect Foundation. So it was working with children in the preschool ages um, with disabilities and you'd be paired one-on-one -on -one with two. You had a kid, ch child in the morning, a child in the afternoon. Yeah. So I did that for almost two years. Yep. Um, was that, is that, a, um, is it exhausting? Is it fulfilling? Is it, um, it was, it was so fulfilling. Yeah. It was, ex and exhausting, <laughs> but I would take the children home and be like, I only had you for three or four hours. Like I'm, yeah, I'm just sending you back to your mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, it's also like having kids is exhausting. Probably. I don't have kids. So yeah. Um, it is, it's. It can be tiring, but I don't know. It, it yeah. filled you up. Like it, it filled me up. Oh, like every yeah. day you just like. Yeah. When you see, 
um, the the kids meet their goals mm -hmm. and make gains. You don't see it. What I realized in that is, you know, there can be like the little the little gains week by week that because they had a team of therapists, behaviors, behavior therapists, um, speech language pathologists, OTs, PTs. Um, that would put together their program and mm. kind of visit the child like once a month or once every yep. two months. And I was a child development facilitator. So I was with the child every day, making sure their program was being carried out, um, coming up with ideas, which was a very, very good skill that I learned there. You know, just having to be creative on yeah. how um, these kids can meet their goals and try and in very creative ways. Um, and it's uh, over time, over a few months, when you see where, you know, the kiddo was starting, in terms of how verbal they were mm -hmm. or, you know, even being able to do things around the home, um, being able to dress themselves. Um, and then in preschool, being able to, you know, identify colors or something like that. And then you, you may not see week by like day by day or week by week, but when you go month by month in the goals that they meet and then the OT or PT comes in and makes new goals mm -hmm. that are a little harder. And then you look at the whole year because it's during the school year, like September to, um, to June. Uh, and then you see where these kids are at and then you also get to meet the parents. Typically you work with the parents a little bit yep. and you just see how like grateful they are too. Like, they're just mm -hmm. like, wow, like this is just huge. Like my, my kiddo, like some, like I remember I had one kiddo that really struggled to say he, he or he, I don't think he had ever said he loved, I love you. Like that was hard for him, mm -hmm. um, to say. So yeah. And then I think, I think in the end, I'm like now looking way back, gosh, that was so long ago, but. Yeah, I think I think where we got to was him, you know, giving hugs. Mm. That's where we got to. So mm. it was an improvement, you know, just mm. showing, um, being able to show some affection, yeah. and that meant a lot to the parents. So mm. yeah, yeah. So I I was very very fulfilled. I think being able to see the parents, um, how much they appreciate it too, yeah. and how much they are doing also to carry out the programs and continue doing it, and want mm. to see their child succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and they're exhausted as well. So yeah, yeah. I felt good helping. Does it um give you a different perspective on things too? Just like either how you operate now or just um, what bugs you or what's important or. Yeah. Or oh, it, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, and you did it for so long and, and it seems like it just seems very intense. I feel like it's just to be in to be in that environment for a couple of years, which is. Yeah. It just seems like. It I, can be tiring because there can be some. There, you you do see some kiddos too that have quite severe disabilities mm -hmm. too, and can you know quite strong reactions to things. Yep. And uh, yeah, and you're you, you got to be creative. You got to be patient. Mm -hmm. um, you see, sometimes I remember seeing some parents that were just like, they just seem like almost like defeated or yep. something, or that they were bad parents. Yeah, it's. It puts things into perspective for sure on mm -hmm. what is important and, you know, what, um, yeah, and just showing that we just need to help people. That's it. It's like mm -hmm. just like it just being able to offer like um, working on these skills and how important early intervention is for these children making gains or later in life. Um, their brains are so much more malleable mm -hmm. at that age. So mm -hmm. it's a really critical window to work on these things quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's uh, it it doesn't. I don't sweat this the little stuff yeah. too. I don't sweat the little stuff at all. Like even even the big stuff. To be honest, like people have actually said that to me. Like I'll re like I rear-ended a car. It was like I remember it was like a couple of years ago, and I was like super bombed. <laughs> Crap. I was like uh, went to work, and then I remember one of my employees was like, "Oh my gosh, are you okay? I'd be so upset." And I was just like please don't talk to me about it. And I was like, <laughs> I was irritated at myself, but I was like, no, it's all good. And I was like, I don't, whatever. It's just stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, do, I do not care about stuff like at all. Mm. Just things yep. like I spill on my cl nice clothes all the time and ruin them and things. I, yeah. Just things. I ripped the leather in my car seat from a button, <laughs> but I don't condition my car seat. So I, <laughs> maybe I deserved it. Like I just, it's just stuff like, there's just, I, I really care a lot about, I care, I'm very motivated by people. Mm -hmm. um, I've done the DISC personality tests and where I lay, I'm very motivated by people, um, not by 
results or success mm. or things. Mm. That's it. So it's interesting that I'm a business owner because yeah. yeah, the, like I, I think it's, I think money is important to live stress-free and that's my goal just to be stress-free. Mm. I hate stress. <laughs> <laughs> so where does it start changing? So after the two years there, mm -hmm. then where do you start going? Uh, then I applied for nursing school. Yeah. Oh. So Applied for nursing school because, um, oh, it wasn't actually two years after that. Then I uh, nannied um, for a family for about a year and a half, two years, um, which was really great. And then, uh, yeah, then I kind of was like, yeah, I need to. Was it school pulling you back or was it or, or was it that the nursing idea? K kidneys? Well, I didn't really know what I could do with my kines degree. Yeah. Sorry for people if you're in kines right now and you think you're going to get a job after. <laughs> you might be serving. <laughs> you could be a child development facilitator, but it's, I mean, I couldn't make career money. Yeah. And I felt unless I was going to do a master's in physio or OT or something else, like it's kind of a stepping stone degree. Yeah. I would say um, I didn't want to be a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so I kind of was like, oh, I'm not really making career money. Like, where's my path going to take me? I was like, um, well, I can't be a therapist, an occupational therapist. So I, yeah, I decided my sister's a nurse. Yeah. I come from a medical kind of family. My mm -hmm. sister's a nurse. My, my dad's a pharmacist. My mom was a doctor. Yeah. So, um, the medicine is kind of in our family. And yeah. did you think it was, um, not like a default decision, but like a comfortable decision. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like was your heart in it or were you just like, ah, I see there's a bunch of people in my world that, that are on this program and yeah. I could probably go there too. I think I can do it. And yeah. I think I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure I was going to love it. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, they had the degree holder route at UC so I could do it in two years because mm -hmm. I already had a degree, yep. which was great because yep. I didn't want to do another four year degree. Um, I f could feel like potentially I was helping people because mm -hmm. nurses help people, mm -hmm. which is what I'm motivated by and what I like doing. Um, and then and maybe I could still insert my like my desire to work with people with disabilities. Yeah. Um, but uh, I know I know those. It's not mainly you probably work in the hospital or there is community nursing too. But yeah, I I think. I think I was a little bit influenced by healthcare. That's kind of, those are the jobs that you get. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I definitely saw that growing up. Yeah. Um, so applied for nursing. Um, but this is where Milk Chart comes in. Mm. So about. Yeah, I, love, I love when we get here. This is where, <laughs> okay, this is where we talk about how long am I in here already? No, you're good. Okay, you're good. good. <laughs> I told you I could talk. Um, so this is where Milk Chart comes in. So I applied for nursing. And I got in, this is 2016, yes, 2016, about five months before I applied, um, I was asked to, oh, sorry, here, I got to go back even further to when I started making candles. So I first learned when I was nannying, um, for that family, the, I remember the, um, the mom of the, the woman I was standing for, she once asked me to buy soy, her soy candles because she learned, she knew that burning paraffin candles like Bath and Body Works wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. And she wanted, she was asking if I could go pick her up some soy candles and if I knew where to buy them. And I was like, uh, like I could go look. So I, I had to go to a couple places. Like I could not find soy candles. Mm -hmm. I found them at Community Natural Foods and they were so expensive. I remember they were like, yeah, they were like 30 or $25. And I was like, what? And I think, or I think that's when I, she, she first asked me and then I told her, I was like, well, why don't I just go to Bath and Body Works? And she's like, no, no, no. They have paraffin in them. It's not a healthy wax. There's toxins in them. Mm -hmm. You know, don't want my kids breathing that in. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay. So I'll get you the soy candles. Um, but then I wanted to burn soy candles. Cause then once I learned that I did some research and there's lots of peer reviewed articles about how um, there's many paraffin candles, the cheap paraffin is a petroleum byproduct. There's two known carcinogens in them, toluene and benzene, so cancer causing, uh, toxins and they cause your eyes to be irritated, your respiratory system for many people. So just not the best to be burning and breathing in. Mm -hmm. Um, so most common candles, uh, like Yankee candles and Bath and Body Works candles are yep. usually made with paraffin. 
So then I decided I was going to learn to make soy candles because I loved burning candles. You you always had? Like growing up, you always loved burning can- candles? Uh, yeah, and then well, the- sort of. I mean, when I was burning candle age, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but it it was a thing, and then all of a sudden you got educated and, yeah. and things started to, yeah. you're like, click. Yeah, that was it. I loved having candles. And then, uh, yeah, and then I learned that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make a change. And I was like, I can, as I, and I couldn't afford soy candles at that age. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'm, I can learn how to make this. And then I, re- I realized I'd seen wood wicks before, and I they were hard to find at the time, about six, seven years ago, in Calgary anyways. So I decided to do some research, buy some wax, buy f- scents and fragrances and then try to find wood wicks um at wholesale and then start making candles and I would just make a pot I bought a pouring pot and I'd make eight candles at a time yeah. and I'd give them to friends I'd make new scents just I'd give half to friends save half for me yeah um and then yeah I was making candles and then when I got the idea to start a company it was really from a good friend of mine Carolyn she it was during the time that the Fort McMurray forest fires were happening. Mm-hmm. And I, she was a friend that I always gave candles to. And she asked me, uh, uh, she's like, Hall, she's like, uh, she worked at Kitten Ace at the time. And she's like, we're doing a little market, a pop-up market with some vendors. Um, and all the money raised is going to go to the victims of the Fort McMurray forest fires. Would you like to sell your candles at it? And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'd love to. But like, I don't have a brand name. I don't have insurance which I probably need (laughs) like especially for a burning thing I was like I don't have like I've never sold this before um so I couldn't do it and then that got my wheels turning where I was like okay what if I did want to sell a candle I was like oh like I really wish and and, like I could use it to support something and that would feel really good because I really wanted to do that and be a part and raise money for the the Fort McMurray forest fire victims and Mm -hmm. I was like oh that were displaced like out of their homes and I was like okay Maybe I should come up with a brand name. And then, you know, I'm going to nursing school or like I've applied. I didn't know if I was in yet. Hopefully I was. <laughs> um, I applied for nursing and I was like, you know, I am a bit bummed. I'm going into this program that didn't think was where I was where I was going to go. And, you know, I, I'm no longer working, you know, in, at cause effect or, you know, working with people with disabilities and, you know, maybe how I can feel connected to this community is I could create this company, sell a product, and donate a dollar from the sale of every candle. Um, and I'll choose, and I'll just donate it to a nonprofit in Calgary. Um, and I'll choose a program that Fraser would always talk about going to. Fraser's a um, mm-hmm. boys' group of palsy that I swam with. And because uh, he would always, he always, he'd share, we'd always, he'd share so much about what he was up to. Uh, and he would always do the sit ski program and loved it at the CADS, uh, so the Canadian Association for Disabled Skiing at COP. Mm-hmm. The sit ski program, um, he's been uh, with uh, Between Friends. He's spent time there, gone to Camp Bonaventure before. So I had he- always heard of all these cool organizations in Calgary that were really doing cool things to create inclusion. So I was like, okay, that's what I'll do. I was like, and then I'll, I'll donate a dollar and then maybe I could like buy some nursing textbooks with the money I make and I'll just sell it at markets. Like I'll go to Market Collective. I was like, ooh, Market Collective is so cool. I would always go and I'd be like, man, vendors here are so cool. I was like, I want to be one of those. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I could buy some nursing textbooks and I can feel connected to this community and feel like I'm living my purpose and at least making like, maybe a very small difference. Um but trying to assist any way I can. And I love making, I loved baking. I loved making candles. It was a lot of fun. I felt Mm -hmm. like I was pretty good at it. So Mm -hmm. Um, then, uh, yeah, so that's how the idea of Milk Jar came. And then I worked on it for about six months. It was so funny trying to, me trying to start a business by myself. I I thought I could, Because the way you're, mind works and just like just to get it off the ground you were it was it wasn't hard like I'm very impulsive uh or decisive actually yeah Uh, but I have really good intuition Mm. like my intuition has never led me astray ever so when so when all this is happening when you're um you're you're, you're scheming this idea Mm -hmm. your gut's saying like you can trust this like you can go down this path like you can yeah well I mean the hardest it wasn't about starting milk jar that was easy. It was when I dropped out of nursing school. So you making, did get, I got in and I went. And then for how Milk Jar uh, one semester. Yeah. And so, Milk Jar took off during that semester. Okay. 
it like, because I had my first market collective, or not, I shouldn't say took off, but like it, I, I brought it to market collective in February. Yeah. I started nursing school in January. Mm -hmm. I applied for the market collective and I sold out of 260 candles, which was a lot. That seems like a big like number. Six, it was like, I think like $5,000, I think at the time. Did you have a number going in? Like if you, I think did, it was that. would you have said to yourself, you know, if I could make a thousand bucks over this first, you would have been okay. Or like oh, 500 yeah. like, you, I'm sure I, there was like a loose I number had to in your make head. candles after the market. Like I, on my, cause I made them on my stove at the time. So each burner, you could make mm -hmm. eight candles a pot. I love, how, I love how you know the math. Yeah. Eight <laughs> candles a pot. And how many burners you had six or something? <laughs> Two, four, six. Four. I don't know. Four of them. Yeah. yeah. Like that's how I made, I, I, cause I didn't have a wax melter. Yeah. It wasn't already melted. I had to melt mm -hmm. it on a double boiler on my stove. So mm -hmm. I'd have to go back each night and label more candles, wake up at four in the morning and like label yep. them all and then go to the market and work mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. But it was really, really cool. People were stoked. Pe not many people had seen a woodwick before. Um, and there wasn't really a known candle company mm -hmm. in Calgary, not much before then. Um, did you have your, did you have your, like that first, first market, did you have your story kind of? out there yet or was, was it people just uh, like they knew that a dollar was donated that okay. was it well i didn't even know my story that was i guess that was the story then yeah yeah we were we i i mentioned i think i yeah. was because it wasn't on boxes yeah. or i remember i had brown boxes that i think i put a label on or stamped or something you just people were interested in your approach yeah yeah, yeah. i did say that we a dollar is donated for sale of every candle yeah. um and we're supporting cats calgary this yeah. first year hmm. um so and I didn't really give a why, just yeah. I just did it. And that's it. It was funny. I remember a few years later when I um, I took the ATBX program. It's like an entrepreneurship, like accelerator kind of program okay. where you learn from other businesses and yep. you learn how to like like what's your what's your mission and your business pitch and all this. And I remember getting asked like why why do you donate to like nonprofits mm -hmm. like that support children with disabilities? Like what like what what's the reason? Like mm -hmm. you know it's a candle like. I would think you would donate to like sustainability or light or or something like that yeah. because it was a candle, like it was associated. Mm -hmm. Like how does the candle come into play? I was like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't really, like the candle's just the vehicle mm -hmm. for what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. The can it wasn't, the, yeah, like the, it wasn't the can, it, the candle is just the vehicle yeah. for really what I wanted to do. It wasn't the other way around. Yeah. Like how can I attach something to this candle? Yeah. And just find a cause. Yeah. Like the cause was already... The was main, there the main thing um so after you had that crazy experience you dropped out of school <laughs> yeah yeah it, well I, luckily I I I was having a hard time I was like I was like I remember like crying a lot because I was like I don't drop out of school like what do I do like I really want to do this company it seems cool mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed nursing school's hard but it's a good job yeah. like and I don't drop out of school like yeah. that's like not an idea of me mm -hmm. that I had um but uh, I ended up deferring it for a year. Mm. So it didn't feel, it was an yeah. easy way to yeah, not yeah. go back to school, but like not yeah. feel like I just wasted or gave up a semester mm -hmm. in case milk jar didn't work out. Cause I was like, I'm not a business owner. Like I don't do that sort of like, thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but your intuition saying that there's something there. Yeah. Like it was, I knew, and I think talking to people too, it was like, it like, well, I remember, I think my dad said this to me. He's like, nursing school will always be there. Yeah a business might not. Like if mm -hmm. you do the nursing school, the do, do, okay, stop milk jar, do the two years of nursing school. Cause it would have been way too hard to have done, yep. uh, ran a business and done mm -hmm. school. Like mm -hmm. it's, it wouldn't have happened. Yep. Um, he's like, nursing school will always be there. Like you can always, like it's never, it's not going anywhere, but like a business that people want or like that people are interested in and mm -hmm. that you're seem excited about, like, you know, you got a window maybe, yep. maybe. Yep. Um, and I didn't know if candles were going to blow up or something and mm -hmm. candles definitely have blown up more. Mm. Like I've seen, there's been a lot more candle companies coming out, which is awesome, mm -hmm. especially during the pandemic too. Mm. So, yeah. So then I decided to defer for a year, uh, which yeah, was really cool and see what milk jar, have a Christmas season, see what I could do with it. Yep. Try to get, make an online shop. Mm -hmm. I built my website in my history and nursing class. Uh, what'd you use? What, what program? Squarespace. Did you, yeah, perfect. <laughs> we only do that. Were, that website has we've had it up and it? it was up until February of this year or March of this year when we rebranded. We have now switched to Shopify. Is it like so, like I said before, before we, I said I'm a marketing person. Yeah, I've, I've built, I don't know, 
25, 30 Squarespace sites in the last two and a half years yeah. and one giant Shopify website, those two platforms are the best. They're awesome. Like yeah. Squarespace to start and then when you need to scale, Shopify is right there. Yep. And that's what we did now. So, cool. but uh, like the, I mean, my, my marketing team now definitely spruced up the yep. Squarespace that I started mm -hmm. like six and a half years but, ago. <laughs> but how cool is it that you, yeah. that you can do it yourself? I did it myself. Like yep. e full e-com does it like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. And I, it's almost better you doing it a little bit at the beginning because then you, you're writing your story and you're oh, yeah. like, you're the only one that can speak authentically to yeah. it. So, yeah. um, this part is like f fascinating to me is kind of your why and your purpose around mm -hmm. this business because it's like <laughs> there's a lot there. Yeah. Um, so when it's so you're six years in, yeah. Did you when you decided to go all in, like trusting your gut and intuition? Mm -hmm. Did you were you ready for what was going to happen? Did you know like up and hmm. down? Did you know like yeah, no. I had n I have no idea. Like to, no to get to idea nineteen people, get to here. I to, know. Like that's a whatever your sales are. I'm sure they're great, but ni having nineteen people work for you is a big thing. Yeah. And having a big space to work in. So like, we're, when you're dreaming, yeah. When you're putting this together, did your head start to wander down that path, or was it just as you saw things grow, you kept on being creative? No, I think it's grown so quickly that I've just kept up. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, like the demand has been there and. Well, I mean, it, yeah, like I, I never saw it or had the plan. Yeah. I have the plan pretty close to when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, um, and I, and I have like when it moved out of my home, that was, the, I would say that was probably the hardest business decision, like leasing a space. Just taking the overhead Yeah. On. It was first buying my first wax melter. Mm -hmm. That was the first it was the first expense because there, there was like $3,500. It's a real like, number. Yeah. And it was like, I think at the end of the first year, and I was like, okay, if I'm, if I'm doing this, like, I'm going to have a wax melter. And then I was like, oh, big expense, but, you know, $3,500. But then it was leasing a space and signing like a five year lease. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'm really doing it. But at that time, too, like, it was bringing me so much joy. Like, it, it's profited since the start. Like, no matter how small it was, but I always was able, I had a bookkeeper from the start to help mm -hmm. me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think I'm pretty good with money. I'm like, I've invested a lot back into Milk Jar. Yeah. I don't, I didn't take pay for three years, I think. I think, but it paid for my rent. Because yeah. it was in my home. Yeah. So there was ways that I could yeah. kind of have it pay for things. But mm -hmm. I didn't take like a paycheck for three years. And then even the last three-ish, yeah, the last three years I took very small mm -hmm. like um, pay. Yeah. Just to like maybe around 40000 yeah. Like nothing crazy. Like I paid managers more um, because I needed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, just in sh to ensure that Milk Jar was able to invest and continue to grow yeah. like by that wax melter. And, yeah. you know, I, I can live within my means. Like Milk Jar made it like two years ago. Like I'm, I feel like everything's a cherry on top. So even when people ask me like, what's your three and five year plan? I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Like maybe there's some, I was like, I don't know. Like it could stay the exact same forever and I'd be so happy, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, um, not having that plan. I feel the same way. It's like, yeah. I, I just can't, I can't put something like, I can't make, I can't have this idea and put a date to it. Yeah. It feels kind of weird. So what do you do? I know do you, like do you, do you when loans you, want to know your yeah, yeah, three yeah, to five yeah, year sure. plan. So then they can just like scribble something down and be like, hey, here's my, here's my thing. But We're going to open a second location yeah. in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I, well, and what did, do you remember what my number one goal is in life? People. To, well, yes, I love people, but to live stress free mm. for myself, mm. to support people. My number one, my what brings me joy is people. Yeah. What my goal is for myself is to live calm, stress free, not to like. I guess my career goals. Um, just try really hard to you know and just live within my means and be comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't need anything fancy. Mm -hmm. Um, and while also one of my, I would say my biggest goal at Milk Turn now is to try to pay living wages. So what is that? 22 is that what it is? an hour now, yep. which is wild. Like yep. I've been in places, man, like I put 10 grand on a credit card when I started Milk Jar 
And before that, I think I had like 10 grand of already credit card debt. So I think I had like, <laughs> like there was a time I had 20 grand of credit card debt, mm -hmm. which isn't as much as what some people have had. It's still and a like, big number though. Yeah, I was like 27 at the time and going went on some trips and yeah. wasn't paying off credit you. card as quickly. <laughs> I've been really good with money in the past, but there have been times when, yeah, like I've, yeah, it was when I got out of the service serving industry, actually, I got in and then I started working at Cause and Effect and yeah. I was making more an hour, but I was missing the tips. Yes. And I all of a sudden have my evenings and weekends free. Mm -hmm. so like, you're out. oh my gosh, I spend so much money going to restaurants and mm -hmm. going out finally. And I was like, yeah, I'm a, I can go out all the time. But I didn't realize, like, I, I got so much social interaction from serving on a Friday night. Yep. So I felt like I was kind of out and you about. There, yeah. My friends could come visit me at work yep. and I was making mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. But now I was not even making money, but I was like spending like crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, going in like music, like I love going, like go, being out and about. I love music. I love going to festivals and mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah, back then I spent a little bit of money. So, and then with Milk Jar starting a business, yeah, I think it was about 10 grand kind of putting it on credit yeah. cards. So um, yeah, but that, that kind of stress, I really want to, I've had that kind of stress. I'm happy. I don't have to be in that kind of stress anymore mm -hmm. um and I really want I know what it does to you I know what it does to people like it's like you it's all you think about when yep. you're in that kind of thing like you're and it's always on your mind and you know I don't know I would just love to pay my employees a, kind of remove yep. hopefully some of that financial stress that they might have um yeah because it's not it's not fun for people to be in. like affects you affects you mentally for sure you know yep when you've been growing this in a short amount of time, mm -hmm. do you have like a guiding light? Do you have something that you're always focused on? Is mm -hmm. there, um, whether it's, I don't know what it might be, but is there something that's pulling you down a direction besides your intuition? Or are you just seeing things and reacting? Um, hmm. It's like, and yeah. the reason I'm asking is because in a short amount of time, you've created something obviously pretty special. Yeah. And... You know, is it is it just because just because is it because your purpose was so rooted on like deeply rooted early that it just you continue to go down that path, or is there just something? I just think it's we can only do yeah. I would say we do have a a guiding light, and I, I that's the thing. I think even when people ask me my three to five year business plan, I actually I, I want to ask you. <laughs> I actually do have I do have an idea for where I want to go and what I want to happen. Um, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the business. Like the business is going to help it happen. Yep. So the business does have to grow. Mm -hmm. So we got to come up with new workshops mm -hmm. and we got to come up with like, you know, new candle scents and stay current yep. and grow our team a little bit because the company is our awareness. It's our, the people follow Milk Jar. Yep. So it's our platform. Yeah. Um, but I really want to, and I've said this last couple of years, I really want to inspire other businesses to hire inclusively as well. Cool. I would say that's because we can only hire so many people. Um, I wish I could hire everyone, but I need we need to get other businesses to start like getting on board and mm. being more more diverse and inclusive with their hiring practices. And you know, it's in my opinion, it's I've I've done a few talks and I think it's silly not to. Like, it's I know there's I've I've had experience you know being around and working with people with disabilities before, so I think it came very natural to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but even when we first, we, when I, I reached out to Inclusion Alberta, um, so there are service providers out there that help businesses. <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't know where to start. I just like, it was three years into Milk Jar when we moved into the industrial bay that we're in now. And I had one employee, I was going to hire a couple more. And then uh, I knew, I was like, you know what, let's, I got to make this, you know, let's take it a step further. Like, let's really walk the talk. You mm -hmm. know, we donate and we say this is important, but how I can do that. I'm the decision maker in my company. So this is the privilege I have to give to others. And this is my responsibility only. Yeah. Like the government's not telling me to do this. And I was like, you know, and it's the business owners that need to care about this. And I was like, you know, I know there's, there's so many roles at Milk Jar that, you know, can absolutely be filled and be, have someone with a disability be very successful at. Yeah. So I, and I didn't know how to even start. So I reached out to between friends who we were donating to, I think at the time, or that we donated to them the year before. So my contact there, and I just asked, I was like, hey, I, I'm looking at hiring some employees um, interested in hiring inclusively. Like, do you know where I can find um, candidates? Like, how can I get resumes? Mm -hmm. So um, 
And then I learned that there were service providers like Inclusion Alberta, Gateway Association. They're all over the country. Mm. Um, and they uh, are government funded and they connect uh, employees uh, looking for employment with businesses. And um, yeah, it has been so great. Like it's, they, they help with the onboarding, with pulling resumes. They come and see the job yeah. that you have. They do kind of interview you. They see the job that's there and then they, and kind of skills that are required. And then they grab some resumes that they have and then they can set up the interviews and then they help with their onboarding. Like we have a, a couple of our employees had like a, an aide come with them for the first month. Mm. And then when we were like, and when they were ready, we were like, yeah, they, they don't need go. to come anymore. Yeah. Mm. Lauren and Amanda were my first. They're actually June 10th and 11th will be their three year. No way. Yeah. So they've been with Milk Jar ever since. Crazy. And they're my longest employees. They are amazing. Like they're, it's, they're, they add so much to Milk Jar as everyone does. And yeah, their work ethic is great. Like there's, it's just, it's, it's incredible like that, you know, the friendships that have formed at Milk Jar. Like mm -hmm. Lauren was in the uh, competing in Special Olympics for curling. She was on the cool. curling team up in Sherwood Park for the Alberta Games mm -hmm. just a few months ago. And three of my our employees, like her coworkers, went up, drove all the way up there and stayed over, got to a hotel, stayed overnight and made signs and cheered mm -hmm. Lauren on to three of her games. And they won. Mm -hmm. Lauren's team won the gold. And I remember Lauren called me. I was, uh, it was uh, Sarah, no one, Ariel, I believe, that drove up there and went. And Lauren called me and was like, no one has ever watched my games before. And was like almost crying and was like, mm. I was so excited. She's like, I had to tell you, like, they came all the way here. Like, they take the time to come watch me. And I'm like, yeah, Lauren, like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, we knew they were going to go. And, you know, they're, fr they're your friends and they care about you. And what you're doing is awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, being able to you know compete for the national team so mm -hmm. it's uh yeah it's it's really cool to see what's kind of happened and, I, and i'm happy to um, create those connections and have more people have experiences yeah. with people with disabilities and see that they are just like us um and that they want the same things they want to work mm -hmm. they you know they 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 live on their own they help themselves like they they take the bus like they're mm -hmm. just like us and they're just human beings and everyone does deserve to work i believe and i think it's a very important um even even skill to have to have co-workers that experience of having like a friendship that's professional mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> um, and be able to provide for yourself to be able to offer your skills and gifts to society i think is really important did you um did you know that you would kind of have this platform you know that you've you built this business, mm -hmm. and now you're passionate about yeah. this. You have this kind of direction, or just this idea mm -hmm. in your head. Yeah. It's interesting how it happens, right? You, you, you're going from like not focused on products and sales, like yeah. now you're something bigger. Yeah. And that's kind of getting to the purpose and kind of your driving force yeah. behind you. Yeah, I but, think that's the reason why I would keep selling a candle. I don't know if I'd sell a candle if it didn't have. Yeah, like didn't have a purpose of, you know, helping people, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like if it didn't have something more to do with it than just the product. Yeah. Like I don't think I would have, I wouldn't have created a company. Yeah. Because I just don't see myself as that. I mean, it's, 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 and like the candles are quite good. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that. <laughs> They're quite good. Like I am also good at what I do. <laughs> I'm good at making them, but, uh, and, yeah, I think, yeah, it's it's really what it drives it. And it's what get me gets me out of bed. I've said this mm. once before, like, I you have hard, hard days in business. Like, running a business is hard. But it's so rewarding, especially this one. Like, mm -hmm. I, like, that, you know, learning to be a leader is mm. hard. Like, working with employees can be hard sometimes. Working with any, it's just working with people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what differences you have. It's literally just people are hard sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, but we're unique and, and that's what makes it beautiful. But it's like, there's, there's times when, you know, you have to make some tough decisions, whether it's being with people, whether it has to do with money mm -hmm. and finances and you just have to be aware. And then there's all these people that are thinking like, you got to do this and yeah. you got to do that. And, um, yeah, it just get and or, you know, something happens where, you know, you lose a client or, you know, 
there's there's uncertainty with how much what's going to happen with the recession or yeah. what have you. So uh, you have bad days, and but what gets me out of bed is knowing that you know this this workplace is more than just selling mm-hmm. candles. Yeah. It is like like Lauren. Lauren, we've had so many employees that have, were unemployed before they came to Melter and they really struggled to get jobs mm. before or th- even if they weren't employed, they were very unhappy mm. at their other jobs. Like they weren't treated well, um, they weren't appreciated yeah. and, you know, or they were teased for maybe their differences and they feel very safe and very welcome at Melter and they feel like they can be themselves mm-hmm. and... I get the best employees. Like we have such respect. They know I respect them and I feel like they really respect me too. Yeah. So it's like, it's such a win-win to be mm-hmm. that way. And it's the reason why I get out of bed is like them, them having, finding a place where they can create, they can grow, they can offer their skills and they are just feel happy to come to you. And they have friendships too mm-hmm. out of it. It's good really spot. good. Yeah. It's a good, it's <laughs> milk is such a great spot. <laughs> it's such a great place to be. Yeah. I really love it. Um, this has been really cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, thank you for having me, Jeff. This was great and letting me babble. It's it's awesome (laughs) because I I told you before we started, the more you talk, the better because I don't have to say anything. So Um, I end the show with one question. Okay. When I say Calgary, where does your head go? Stampede. (laughs) No way. It's because I'm from BC. It's because I'm still technically. I was like, I guess I'm a Calgarian now. I consider myself one for like twelve or thirteen years. But still, Calgary Stampede. Mm -hmm. It was well. It's what brought me here when I was eighteen. That's you showed up for Stampede. I showed up for Stampede when I was eighteen years old. You had a time. Oh yeah, with three girlfriends. Crazy. I went to Coyotes. Do you Mm. remember Coyotes? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. (laughs) When I moved here later, it wasn't here anymore. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think it was, yeah. Yeah, you saw it on its heyday. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks.